The original idea for Siach started about two and a half years ago um, when I had made a trip to the United States and decided that I would meet with a variety of kindred spirits in the fields of Jewish social justice. And I emerged from that trip feeling, on the one hand, a tremendous amount in common. Common values, common techniques, common target populations, common leadership. But with all of this in common, I also really felt that there was a tremendous disconnect, very little information sharing or collaboration going on. And as I began to ask people the question, why, the answer that I got was, not only is partnership difficult, but there's a real issue, particularly in the North American Jewish community, in terms of partnering with Israeli organizations, because the whole notion of Israel and Israel's policy vis-a-vis -vis its minority populations, vis-a-vis -vis Palestinians, vis-a-vis -vis religious pluralism in the state of Israel is so sensitive in the Jewish social justice community that a lot of organizations have decided that they just won't engage with fellow organizations. There are a growing number of people who are not connected to Israel at all. And the younger that you are, the more true that is. And often the more progressive, the more liberal or left wing. One issue on that side is, is what does it mean to infuse progressive Jewish organizations in the United States and England with a, with a deeper internal confidence about relating to Israel and Israelis in, in kind of serious ways? I think definitely today's conversation about Israel <coughs> um, was uh, a powerful experience. Um, I have not had uh, a safe space like that to talk about Israel with like-minded Americans and Europeans and most importantly Israelis uh, in many years. Nobody ever listens until they tell their own story. And, and you needed a setting like yesterday afternoon for people to tell their own story before they would ever get to the point of being able to hear what other people are saying. There was a respectful but robust debate uh, and there seems to be a chasm between Israeli perceptions and American perceptions of the future. For Israelis to understand what we're going through and for us to understand um, how, how sort of alone they feel in the world and demonized. Israel is not one thing. Israel has the whole wide spectrum of identities and values and ways to create social action that anyone could imagine. Um, to say I don't identify with Israel, this doesn't interest me and that's why I won't be connected to Israel now, is kind of to see Israel through the lens of what the world is trying to, to, to create of Israel. I think that um, Herzl did create a mechanism, the, the early Zionist pioneers did create a mechanism for world Jewry to engage with the state of Israel in a way in which we can have extraordinary influence beyond uh, what we have now, and that is the World Zionist Congress, and we aren't using it as a mechanism. And part of that is because I think so many people are alienated from defining themselves as Zionists, that they um, aren't taking uh, the initiative to, to use that mechanism. And I think that our struggle now should be to convince people that it's okay to call yourself a Zionist and that we can define what Zionism is for ourselves. Oh, this was a very intensive, emotionally intensive weekend, very. I think some of the comments about Israel were very hard for me to hear, very, very hard. Um, I realized what a gap there is between Israel and a lot of world jury and American jury, feeling that we are we're struggling in so many ways and we're working we're also working so hard to make Israel a better place and not even still work very hard for the Palestinians or for the Arabs that live in Israel, but that that's part of our duty when we live in Israel. As a Jerusalem councilwoman that deals a lot with the with all the all the the people that live in Jerusalem, I definitely deal a lot with the Palestinians and that's just part of my day to day role. I think that there were mixed reactions, which is what I was trying to elicit. 
Um, I think some people on all sides of the ocean um, or the world felt that this voiced something that deeply struck a chord. Uh, the silence on this issue is something that is deafening and damning and problematic because if the Jewish social justice community cannot say that our biggest challenge, our most exciting challenge is Israel, then we're in bad shape. Because it is the only place where Jewish social justice values can be applied to a Supreme Court and can be applied on a national scale. Even if you disagree with the idea of having one, it's there at the moment. And I think if you're in interested in the application of Jewish values to the organization of a society, whether that's your local street or anywhere else, I think it is somewhat disingenuous not to be engaged with how that applies to the organization of a country. I, I've always been very passionate about Israel from a, trying to create a just and um, better Israel. And in the last few years, I've actually retreated from that. In the United States, it's very hard to talk about Israel and critique Israel, that there's actually a, there's a very strong feeling in the United States that you shouldn't critique Israel. And then on the other side of the coin, the opposite is true. There are, there are the, the grandparents of this generation of Israelis often had family in England or the United States or other places or they came from them. And particularly a generation of Chiloni uh, Israelis don't necessarily have any relationship to Chutz Laaretz. For them, Yehadut is, is synonymous with simply being Israeli. And so the opposite side of the question is, 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 is what does it mean to start to bring Israeli Israeli leaders and Israeli organizations into relationship with the diaspora. I've never been told by by Israelis that they wanted to hear my voice as a le as a leftist um, ever 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 and and so to hear for the first time this weekend to have an Israeli say to me like we want you to speak out so and I'm realizing now that it's not because there aren't Israelis who don't want to hear my voice it's that they I've had never met them and they've they don't have a microphone. As a person who um, has had people call his employer and try to get him fired from his job because of his personal positions on Israel that are completely unrelated to his work, it's easy for me to sympathize with people who are afraid to speak out and say, we can't make Israel part of the conversation because if we do, the people who fund programming in the Jewish community are going to pull that funding. It quite often, discussion around Israel is so polarized that there are so many fights about uh, what's going on in Israel. The, uh, the positions are often so extreme that people who are open to an engagement in Israel, they look at that discussion and they say, That's, that is so harsh and so violent. And, and, and I don't feel like there's a room for any questioning. And I don't actually want to go into that conversation. I think that this is a gathering of activists, people who are not afraid of dealing with challenge, people who are not afraid with standing up to authority, people who are not afraid of rolling up their sleeves and getting their hands dirty in difficult, challenging questions. And so if anybody should be able to deal with this, it should be the social justice community because that is what they do. That is what they do. They challenge, they get their hands dirty and they deal with things that are complex. Changing legislation, complex. Figuring out power hierarchies, complex. That is the work of these people. And so if we can't figure out how to deal with the complexities of a modern nation state and all that comes along with it, then who's gonna do that?